restaurants? Who creates all these amazing things that we use every day in our restaurants? You know, I don't know if you've ever met the companies that do these and know who they are. And I really believe that we have kind of got a pretty crazy special show that we have lined up here on the restaurant show. And I'm super excited to talk to this gentleman about the company that he works for, that he recently just started working at, and the passion he's already got with it and the great stuff that they do. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and him and this amazing company that I'm not going to tell you until we come back here. But how exciting to learn about some, the company that you use their product. I guarantee it almost every day in your restaurant. And you're going to learn about that a little bit. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Here we go. Welcome, Jeff. Welcome to the restaurant show. You know, we're, we're super excited here yeah. to learn about the company you work for, which we're going to tell everyone it's Bungie. Am I saying Bungie. that right? Yeah, you're saying that right. Bungie. Bungie, right? You are a company. Bungie's a company that I think everyone uses every day. I hope I got that right in the intro. Uh, I am. If you're not, I'd be surprised. I'd say it's if out of your 14 sites, um, that we supply the majority of the oil for it is either the number one or the number two volume item out of the site. So yeah, for restaurateurs out there, when you look at restaurants or people, consumers, even you probably had your product once in your life or not. Probably. Yes. Uh, if it's not a canola oil, which is our number one, it'd be our vegetable oil, number two. And then, (laughs) you know, if you want to go on the animal, uh, the short things we have, you know, the traditional animal, fats with beef tallow or short oh really spray. yeah also our margarine so and we have uh pan spray so we wow. are your anything for any of your baking or ingredient needs we you'd be surprised at the plethora of uh customers we have and even with uh with uh with cisco so it's uh, awesome so let's talk a little bit about bungie here and your global leader in the egg business and who you are. Can you yep. tell us, just give us a high level, you know, perspective of who you guys are. Absolutely. So we are a 200 plus year company. Um, 200 years, by the way, sorry, interrupt. 200 years. No way. 200 years. Well, yeah. Uh, Bungie's been around for 200 years. Our main thing, we connect farmers and consumers, ensuring that food and feed products move safely and efficiently from where they're grown to where they're needed to where they're consumed. That's what we did. So everything from, and when I tell you that um, our core principles um, and what we believe in is acting as one team, driving for excellence and do what's right. Mm-hmm. Those are three values that we hold very near and dear. And it's bred right from the top, from our CEO, all the way down to everyone at the plant level. And that's what we, that's, that's the core, that's what the core business and what we drive every day. Public company, family Pub- owned? Public company. We are on the S&P 500. So wow. we, we were traded um, nationally, internationally. And, you know, when you watch the market go up and down every day, um, we continue to strive for. But achieving the S&P 500 this year is something that's um, it's no small feat <laughs> for sure. But, um, you know, like you, we, we move the needle when, the, when, when it comes to it. So now can we, let's talk a little bit about the values that Bungie has, because you guys yeah. state this on your website. Yeah, I love the fact that one of the top ones is you act as one team. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Um, so really by fostering inclusion and collaboration and respect, um, it is evident from, again, I'm seven, almost eight months in. And from day one, when I met the head of Canada, Elizabeth McAuliffe, she was one of the first people that was there, walked in, shook my hand, and said, what a nice thing it is for me to join the company and, and be involved. Um to my boss, Karen, who is honestly one of my favorite people in the entire world, um, she brings co- inclusion to it. So, and everyone is open. And then when we sat down and we do our global calls um, and you hear the the CEO say, remember your first day. And he was going on, like, I was one of th- a thousand people hired in the quarter. And he goes, remember your wow. first day. Like, remember your first day when you started here. And the tenure that's in there, you know, he said, if you have a problem, you have an issue, if you want to see it, feel free to send me a note on Teams, email me or call me. 
And that's what I really mean. And he truly means that. Like he said, if you want to do it, um, Dawson Burler, who's a, a, the head of ours, uh, North mm-hmm. American Food Service, you know, he is the first guy too. He, he sends us notes every day saying like, hey, let's let's collaborate as one team, keep driving the ball forward. But if you see a problem, you see an issue, let us know. Let us know how we can do better and what we can do. So the next value on that one, it's like drive for excellence, you know, agile, innovative, and efficient. Efficiency is as huge. Um, and what we can do to be better in every way, shape, mm-hmm. and form, right? So, and then the last one, by doing what's right, acting safe, ethically, and sustainability. Um, like I said before, every meeting, doesn't matter whether it's Global Town Hall, our, our breakout sessions we do, we have a safety tip that everyone does, and they mean it. So that, because at the end of the day, they want us to get home to whether that's your family or friends or what myself, they want you home safe. And, you know, when, so they want you to see an act and do, right? Like if you see an issue, you see a problem, they are, they have no problem. Like they have, they have a way for mm-hmm. us to communicate that. And that's not whistleblowing. That is not, that's just doing <laughs> what's right. So if you see an issue, please tell us and let us know how we can improve and do it better. Yeah. You know, I think when you think companies today, a lot of these things resonate with these companies. They're similar in a way that um, are really focusing on the people that work in the companies and doing what's right. It's, it's that simple. It really it, return. You get to see a better return. Yeah. And, and when you have, like we did a, they did a little um, thing last month and they're honoring some of the people that have been there five, yeah. 10, 15 years. There was a gentleman was there 35 years. And that's, <laughs> you know, that's, that's few and far between, but that just, one of the reasons why I joined when you see the passion and the energy in this and, you know, and we're, it's, it's, you know, it's different every day, but mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're selling a commodity product. So we've got to be out there and we've got to be innovative and we want to have talking and we want to be offer solutions to people. Right. But well, you know, when you, when you're driving the impact of the bottom line of so many people and so many establishments, that's what makes it great. Right. And you know, when you've got the passion and energy from like, I'm in sales, but whether that's an R and D, whether it's in packaging, whether it's in customer yeah. service, whether it's touching the trading desk, you know, like everybody's on along the same page and that's what, we try to deliver and sell to you and offer to you that ends up getting out to the consumers. So, so Jeffrey, yes. let's talk a little about product innovation. Yeah. The quality. In terms of product development, what sets Bungie apart from other, because there's other oils out there. We know that. Yes. What sets you guys apart in the market? I would say our robust R and D team. So we have over 30 people that are super passionate about food and oil. And by I mean super passionate, if I had a colleague of mine, Janet Wong, who has <laughs> helped me out um, on uh, some training sessions, which her passion, her energy that she brings, I learn something new every time she speaks. And whether that's a new way to use the oil, what's in our oil, what's in our shortening, what might be in, in our margarines. Um, you know, when we made these Mexican snickerdoodles for the foodie summit and they were amazing soft to the bite to the touch but you can when you can see that you talk about the products and then have it have it consumed it's amazing and it's a great taste and then in terms of innovation too when i could if we go to the plant we had one of our plant managers provided us the samples that we could show and say here's a canola seed and here's all the refined product at the end and you can see a picture each step along the way and when i brought that to some education sessions, it helps understand the final product. And that and you can see the mm. steps along the way. And another thing we brought to the Foodie Summit, we have uh, actually a mini expeller where it shows the first step. So it's taking the canola seed, running it through the expeller, brings out the cake in the end that we sell off to um, animal feed or, you know, that we use 100% of the product. And then the end is the crude part. And then that's just the first step in the process to the end product. But when people see that, there's very... I'd say that's what separates us in terms of our training and our knowledge that we have. And just, if you want to see it, you want to understand it, we'll open up the doors and we'll bring you through and, and let you see exactly the, you know, the size, the, um, the products and every step along the way. But, um, you know, we do extensive testing on our oils and our blends so that we can understand the performance. So we, when we say, here's what it does, we can show you, we, we, we can pass it. Like we can tell you that that's how it performs. Um, you know, in terms of the production level, we follow the American Oil Chemist Society and they're proceeding their testing. So that okay, every first of all, I, d- I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. There's a <laughs> so society out there. A, it's what I mean. I, I learned something new on it. Yeah, there's an it's wow. the American Oil Chemist Society. Um, 
and its procedures for testing the quality of every batch of product we produce that it meets to our at the highest quality of specification. So like we have teams on site that measure every batch. So then when it goes out the door, it's the exact same. And if it's not, it'll get pulled back and redone. Now, is that, is that, is that some of the things that also maybe sets you apart from other oil companies out there? Is that there's an inconsistency in oil? Is that, is that true? Yes. Yep. So that's, really? so that's, no yep. so, so we have the, the, that's what I mean. So our, our um, investment, and when we make it and we and we reinvest it and when we hire the best in terms of that, we have some amazing people that ensure that product quality and ensure that um, consistency. And when we bring the farmers in, like as we crush and produce and 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 package all in one, right? So we are a crusher. Um, no, we are no, can you can you explain the crushing thing as we get into these stages yeah. here? What, what's what do you mean by crushing? So uh, we are crush and refine. So when we we, uh, we buy from our farmers, whether that's our canola seeds in the West, uh, bring it to our, and we have a plant in Hamilton where, this, okay. where the canola seeds would come in. And when we say crush and expel, think of like a, I don't know how, to, how can I explain it easily, uh, like a big masher, almost like a mixer, okay. so almost like a mortar pedal where you put it into a, yeah, into yeah. a mixer, but it gets heat, heated up, run through a, a, like a spindle almost, yeah. where it produces a cake that almost looks like Kind of funny word, but like a mat, like mushed up bumblebees. <laughs> okay, okay, up. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That, that heating process presses and expels out the oil. So the crude. Part. And these are the yellow fields we see in the prairies. Is that That's right? the yellow fields. That's the canola field in, in the prairies. That's it. So oh. the seed is in the top. And we, I, I, we, we've had a phenomenal crush this year, which is helping out with in terms of the price and the, and the quality and the consistency. So. Yeah, when we're open and honest, what happened earlier this year was, you know, the force majeure was an act of God that happens where the crop went south and yeah. took away, right? But that's that's the the nature of the business. That's what happens with us sometimes. But you know, this is where you know take you take the good with the bad. And right now, we had a great crush and a great crop, and we're uh, we're we're moving forward. Now, do the weather's got to impact the fields? And yeah. this is probably where your R and D. And your and the quality that you're looking for, has got to play a big role in this because the environment's changing. We see different weather patterns, different growing seasons. All this must be changing. So this must be also moving target most of the time. That's what, yeah. So that's what we like. The, we are in touch with the farmers on a daily basis, right? So really, when, when, you know, we have experts that are out there in the field that are making sure that that product is right. And then when we bring the farmers even to our plants. Yeah. Whether that's in Edmonton or Altona or Hamilton or even I'm speaking for Canada, but in the in the US, you know, we we bring them in and we can make sure again when we inspect the crop and inspect the product that it's the best that we want. That because if it's not, then we won't package or refine it. And so that's so cool. It just kind of leads in the sustainability yeah. is is crucial when we look at the aspects of food service today. We see operators, we're gonna see this. I have a feeling we're gonna see sustainable talks. And on menus and restaurants and through QSR everywhere in 2024. It's going to be a, another one of the top yeah. buzzwords. I believe it's today, but I think it's going to be more prevalent next year because we're, we're, we're adding more value because we're seeing price increases on menus. And I think sustainability is, uh, is a word that we'll, we'll see more of. What's uh what's some of the same sustainable practices that look like when it comes from Bungie? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you when it is part of our core values. Yeah. It is that right yeah. there. So, it is our sustainability is literally at our core. It's one of it's in it's in our core values. Um, when we take connecting for a better tomorrow, we have three scopes that we look on. So that's action for climate, responsible supply chains, and accountability. But more specifically, um, sustainability it remains integral to our global business, and mm -hmm. we're proud to share that in our soybean traceability as we continue to improve. So, like we will show you everything. Um, in addition to promoting decarbonization or supply chains. We always develop and regenerative agricultural programs in key regions. Um, we're also investing $250 million in capital expenditure spending over that we've identified over the next decade that will go directly to scope one and scope two of our targets. Really? Um, yeah. So we are, and we will open the books and show you that. And then in 2020, wow. 20, in 2022, 25% of our uh, Bungie's total energy use came from renewable and zero carbon sources. So okay, okay, I got a question on this because yeah. I don't know if this falls into this. Maybe it gets into it later on, but it's okay. can you reuse oil for a fuel? I see this on TV. Is that true? 
Yes and no. <laughs> 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 I mean, everyone's want- running out to the deep fire, going, "Oh no, no!" no. And there's there's myths out there. Listen, we've we've I've, I've talked to some customers that have people um, trying that, trying this out, and in the end, no, like you don't want you you don't want to reuse it, right? Like you want to don't put it in don't put it in the beamer. You're no, saying no, like <laughs> one thing that we supply is um, frying best practices. So, like I have. Um, which I want to be make out there for everyone. It's just how to how do you best use the oil? Like yeah, we also have yeah. a funny trick called enemy, enemies of oil, where it lists um, things that are that are that aren't good for <laughs> for your oil life, right? That mm-hmm. literally will uh, erode your your oil practices um, and quality, right? Like for yeah. instance, enemies of oil. Like how to fight them? You got heat, carbon, air, water, salt, soap, right? Like salt, like that's. Soap, that, you said soap. So soap, yeah. So like when we say soap is an enemy oil, but you only want to use approved cleaners and follow the pr- proper procedures, right? Like okay. in terms of heat, you want to make sure you're cooking at the proper temperature. Um, carbon, like you want to filter the oil, skim the vats, clean your fryer. Um, if you had that recycling product or or the one of some of the bigger, comp- bigger fryers, it does it for you. Um, air so during slow periods turn off and cool or cover the fryer vents um whoa, water, whoa, you, wanna... like you said vents cover the vents sorry cut vats so the fryer vats sorry not vents. yeah 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 yeah. but i've never thought of that i never yep. thought of that yeah you want to really? like what you want to make sure when, during what's cool you turn off and cover it but make sure it's cooled down properly so then it does mm-hmm. that right um but that'll help next that'll help prolong the life of it um you know water completely Heck. dry dry all the fryer elements after washing it you want to cook the food from frozen, but you don't want to. You, you've probably seen it. You know, people take fried, whether it's chicken fingers, whether it's French fries, and they yeah. might empty it into the basket over top of the fryer. Well, every time that water that's frozen that goes in the basket and it goes down, that's that's going to kill your oil right away. Really? It, how, yeah. how, okay, you've been in this, you know, like you, you've been bunny n- not that long, but you've been in probably in the industry quite a while. Yes. How many times have you seen people misuse oil? Oh. Is that, a, is that a crazy question? <laughs> no, it, because people want to take, I don't want to say, Jay, I don't want to say shortcuts, but it is, it is a shortcut, right? That like happens, they might not have the time. They might not have, yeah, they might be well, pressing yeah, orders. In, but when it is a, I say, it's funny, like the canola oil or vegetable, like it is the, the key cog in the wheel that starts and finishes, yeah. right? Because whether it's the product you're putting into a salad dressing whether it's a product that's put on top of a base in terms of a stir fry or whether it's your you know which is probably one of the biggest products whether you're frying your chicken wings in there like if you're not putting the best quality oil in there well that's going to affect your food quality that's going to affect the taste right like we have a chart mm-hmm. too that shows you um you know the color of of different products like on the fry life like yeah. it'll show you hey like when some people think like the dark brown color is what it means it's cooked well, not necessarily. It means the, the oil may be brown and bad. So you bite into it, you're like, oh, now well, would I want to go back? No. So like when I say, when you're asking me, have I seen it? Yeah. Because you see it mm-hmm. when when people are like, because the price too, right? Like where price might be through the roof. Well, yeah. there's ways that we can help you or I can help you or my company on that side that can help educate that the Cisco reps out there or help educate yeah. the restaurateurs out there on how to, you know, how to best manage it right like when so, we sorry. i was just going to ask you like how much so when we look at the education thing yeah. do you find that you have to educate the whole staff on this i'm assuming or is it just a couple people and then it, you know, it doesn't whichever one they want like so okay. whether you have you know I, I i don't i think you could i've done both so okay yeah i've done both but like if i guess i've worked as a server back in the day too but if i see a product that doesn't look right that might be brown or like, let's say, um, you know, it, it, it it's it doesn't look right. Then something might be going on that I could then identify the guys on the line or tell someone yeah. or tell the chef, right? So, but the key guys are the clearly the the chefs or the or the people on the line that are that are dropping the box. So they can see what's going on, whether they see the color of the oil is not the right temperature, or, or the or it might be darkening too quick, or yeah. it might be foaming excessively, or it might come out super greasy, right? Like that's so that's why you can if you have this sheet up that i gladly make available to people as i said called mm-hmm. the frying best practices it literally gives a deep frying 101 it gives you like a little 
a little guide to, you know, things to everything from temperature control to fire cleaning to additional points you want to remember um, that just people can, you know, you might be just doing it because you're doing it, but you might be doing it not necessarily in the wrong way, just might need a quick reminder, hey, do it this way. And it might actually help it out where you're not having like, man, I got to go buy another jib oil or I got to add yeah. this up or like we're using too much oil too quickly. Right. That's these are just ways that can help prolong it. Of course, we want to put the best like that's where it comes down to. We want you to have the best quality product that's going to give you the best quality food and people can consume it and come back and enjoy it. How many um, question for you? Yes. How many different kinds of oils are there? Is there Ooh. different? Is there different types? Yeah. Different yeah. kinds? Yeah, so there's. You know, there's I know there's olive oil. I know all those. Like those. No, but like when so, you get into the canola, is there is there different kinds of canolas? It's not different kind of canola. So we have canola oil, which comes from the canola seed. We have vegetable oil, which comes from soya. We have sunflower. We have peanut. Um, we have uh, oh. palm. But like, you know, there's oil that can be pressed from anything. But those are those are say the big the big ones, the big the big five that are there. But mm-hmm. canola is number one for sure. And canola is pretty much used pretty much everywhere, right? Like it's, there's not a place in North America that uses more of it, or is there different places that you realize in regions? Uh, re- region, so regionality, um, it's funny if you go preference, um, veg, veg oil, soy is bigger in the U S than Canada. Really? Yeah. Yep. Veg oil is bigger in the U S than in Canada. What's, what's the big one in Canada then? Canola. Canola. Oh, so, oh, so canola is not considered a veg oil. Nope. Really? Nope. Veg veg oil is considered with soybean. So two, two different. Products. Serious. Yep. Yep. So oh. in, in your like we do both your we we do both your products. We have a Cisco mm-hmm. veg and we have a Cisco classic canola. So there's the other there's high leg which is a different one entirely, but th- that's for high performance or higher ones. And then we have the canola which is. The, I would say the majority of what people are using, and then we have the veg. But with veg, you gotta you gotta uh, you gotta watch it more. So vegetable oil because it's got a higher burn points. So you gotta you gotta watch um, what's like you gotta you gotta really watch what you're doing with it. So it's more delicate, would you say? Yes. yes. Really? Yep. I didn't know. Does it, it burn? You said it burns at different levels. Higher higher a higher burn point. So like higher, higher burn level. point. Yeah. So so. Wow! Did not I had no idea. Yeah, that's why we're. That's why it little education sessions. It's, it's it's great where people can learn and ask the questions, right? But it just um, it gives it allows people to to really get a better understanding. Because, like I said, I'm still I'm still new to this. I'm still new. And I learn something every day um, mm-hmm. when it comes to what's going on, right? And um, you know, it just helps it, when when you go through it and you hear what's going on and yeah, like it's, it's the most, so here's the cure given. So vegetable oil is the most cost effective yeah, in terms of your every day, but it's the, so it has a lower stability, which means it can, you just have to watch it quicker. Right. So, but yeah. um, it's not hydrogenated and trans fat free where, you know, when you go your canola oil, it's high, high in mono and polysaturated fatty acids. Um, it's got the same great flavor as a high stability, but it's it's just an easier one to manage and an easier one to to look after. Look at all. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, Jeffrey, you know what? I did not know all this about oil. I had no idea. I, mean, I don't think a lot of people do. I think there's that assumption that people know. I know everything about oil, so I don't need to know. But what? you just I think you need to know. Yeah. No. It's 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 um, that's the big thing, uh, Jay. It's like when you're asking about support education. Um, you know, we want to, we can provide any technical support to the end customer. So we have a ton of literature. We have handouts. Um, you know, like I was saying, the fried best practices, enemies of oil. We can also provide training right to you. Uh, when I say you, to the end user, to the customer, to the sales reps, to the DS. Like, we have no problem doing that. Um, I think that's one thing that sets us apart, too. Like, we, I, I, you know, we, we love doing it because it really helps out. It gives that, you can help you find that right oil, that right shortening for their yeah. needs to understand, get the best possible fry life or whatever what you want, you want to choose, whether that's baking too. So that that is really what's key. Like you're, if you can ask me the question, if I'm, I'm happy to say, I don't know, let me find out. And I can find <laughs> out pretty, pretty quickly, right? Like, and and it's like, when we have those 30 people in R&D in North America, they're 
jumping all over it. They're here to, they're super passionate about it, right? Like, I'm blown wanna, away. You, I, I'm blown away by that as well. I'm blown yeah. away. Yeah. So unbelievable. Well, Jeffrey, thank you so much. And for Good. everyone else, you know what? You can reach out, check out Bungie's uh, website as well, and please learn about oil. It's important. It's so yep. important. So, Jeff, absolutely. Thank you I, so really, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, everyone. And any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, and I'm happy to help out. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jay. So to everyone else, I'm going to, I'm just going to wrap up today's show and just talk really quickly here about this. And, and I just want to thank Jeffrey that joined us today on our show. Uh, key takeaway that I got, educate, educate, and educate yourself on oils. I had no idea on some of the things that Jeffrey was talking about. And I think it's so important when we look at going forward in 2024, we need to be, I always said this, we got to button down the hatches on everything. It's going to be, and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But if you know what, it might be, a, it might be a tougher year. Everything's indicating that. And, and that's the way it is. We can get through it. That's the best part. Uh, we just need to look at all these areas to help ourselves watch every penny. And I think the more that we can know more about products like what Bungie's got uh, when it comes to oil, I think it's incredibly important that uh, we're reaching out to people like Jeffrey and to uh, get as much education into our staff because it's not your executive chef touching your oil. You know that. We need the educated people in there and our staff in there to know what we're doing with oils because it ain't cheap. We know that. It ain't cheap, but we need to have it, so we need to know what to do with it. So there's my key takeaways from this today, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks again for joining us on The Restaurant Show. Cheers.